All right, now for this next part, this is probably the easiest step, though there are some tricks to learn. We're gonna be using a very unique kind of paint uh, called contrast. Bouche and Bouche. Here's are just two colors, but there's probably 40 of them. Now, what this does is it's got a, the weirdest configuration on its surface tension, its ability to kind of stick to itself, and its weight. That is, <clears throat> it will generally want to pull into the recesses of your model, which can make a really give you a lot of depth. Now, that said, you have to put enough of it on, but not too much. We want to see little pools, little lines forming, but they need to be small. If they're very large, when the stuff dries, it's going to look like candle wax almost. So we don't want that. Here's our little guy. And here's our plague bearer flesh. Now, if you're using, if you're trying to do a different color Yoda and you're your contrast is coming out way too dark. They have this contrast medium and you cut, you can mix some of that in there and it will be a little clear and a little less saturated. You want to use a pretty big brush for this. It doesn't need to have a fine point. This is almost like a watercolor. So we get it on there and we go ahead and we get kind of a big drop not something uncontrollable put it down there you see how it's wanting to get down into that recess if there if there isn't a recess to build it into you want to keep it moving and you don't really want to let it build up over that you just want enough to kind of stain the color in so that everything is a similar hue so you see all that roughness that we left before well, when we run this over it, it just kind of blends together and it, it's really smooth now. Not super smooth, but smoother. And once this dries, that's really just going to look kind of interesting. Now with this stuff, don't bind off more than you can chew. We need to wait a second and see if the contrast is pooling up too much anywhere. If it's pooling up too much, like see in his ear here, but that's gonna leave a hard line and that's gonna look a little weird. So we're just gonna drag that back out. We come over here and we drag that back out and let it sit. It's sticky and if it's spread out enough, it'll kind of stay there. Do note a couple things that where we put that bright hellion green mix, the color looks a little different and that's great. That's exactly what we want because this little baby we want him to look like he's alive. And if he has little subtle color changes, that's really gonna sell that. If we take a look at this other one over here, <clears throat> a little more finish on it, he's got all kinds of different colors going on. And that really helps sell him as this living thing. While this stuff is wet, and it will be wet for a while, so you have some time, you can actually blend in other colors and it's super easy to do. Nasdrag yellow, and we're just gonna get it in his ears. Like that, boom. So it's kind of sharp right there. We don't want it to be sharp. So since that plague bearer flesh is already wet, it's still wet on there. You could pretty much just move this around. So while this stuff is drying, remember to go back and, and just make sure that it's pulled up in the right places and it hasn't pulled up in any of the wrong places. Back here, it's getting a little thick on his neck. So I'm just gonna knock that in there. We've given our Yoba a pretty good time to dry and he's looking pretty interesting, about what I wanted. So let's go ahead and move on to the coat. The first thing we gotta do, well, we got a little green on there from when we sprayed him and from when we dry brush him. So we're gonna mitigate that, but only a little bit. We don't really need to get rid of all of it. This coat is a little textured and this dry brush is a little more coarse than the other one the coarseness of this will actually help us out terminata stone is going to get that on there like so knock most of it off get it get it smooshed in there so that it's kind of uniform and it isn't clumpy and we'll just go over this as if we were doing that top-down highlight. 
Because this is lighter than <clears throat> what's on there now. Okay, that's ruined forever. Actually, we're going to leave it just like that. We're mostly just interested... Well, we're mostly interested in just getting the green, rid of the green. We may as well just lighten it up some. We could move that across here. Now, <clears throat> check this out. When I run this across, it really just touch, it gets the top of that texture. And it actually really helps bring out that texture, which is a positive. So let's do more of that. When you go to put the contrast paint or any wash like paint like that onto another paint, you need to make sure the underlying paint is completely dry. Otherwise, they'll mix together. Snake by leather. Get used to seeing this one. This is by far one of the best paint products I've ever used. It comes out of the pot looking great. You don't have to mess with it at all. It actually on a lot of things really does look like leather and it takes no time to apply it. Remember to apply this pretty liberally. It might seem at first like it's too dark, like right there, it's just very hammered on there. We'll give it time and it will spread out. As long as it's not making these sharp lines, we're good. Now this stuff can be pretty sloppy, so when you're putting it on, if you're going oh, next to something that you're gonna paint uh, with an opaque paint later, like this base, which will be like a solid black, you can get it on there, it's not a big deal. But it, you don't wanna get it over something that you plan on using this contrast stuff on, because as it's transparent, it's gonna show, the, it's gonna show through. So we'll just leave some space for now, and we'll come back with a smaller brush later. So you want to come back over this and anywhere where it's not really making sense, just go ahead and move that. Now we want to do the collary part, the fluffy part, and we're going to use the same color. However, we're going to dilute it with some of this contrast medium. So for this case, I'm going to do about four to five, four to five to one. And we just swirl this around, nothing really to see here. You'll notice that with the medium mixed in, the paint seems a little brighter. It's not. It just seems that way while it's wet. It's not actually brighter, but it is less saturated. So if we put it over something that's bright, it will be brighter. I am messing this up. If you spill this on something that you like, don't sweat it. This stuff stays, stays workable for a while, and you can generally move it off. Okay, so for this texture, <clears throat> we don't want it to pool in weird ways, ways that don't make any sense. So we're going to go back in, and yeah, we're going to move it. We're going to do that the quick way. What we're going to do is we're going to paint his fingernails, his eyes, and that base. We're going to start using some opaque paint, Wraith Bone and Abaddon Black. And these are both base paints, meaning they're very opaque. They're still a little translucent. We won't really see much of that underlying color. Whenever you use these, you want to have some water handy or some other kind of medium to thin them down and get them really smooth. The way they ship, they're pretty thick. They're meant to just kind of hammer color in place. 
So we want it to go on smooth. So what I do is I just get a little bit on there. And a lot of times I'll just tap it in my water and move it around a little bit. And we put his little fingernails on. This is really hard to do without putting your elbows on the table. I'm going to rethink this. Nice and easy. When you paint with a paint like this, you want to make sure the tip is together. That's really important here. If your tip on your paintbrush is not together, you're going to have a bad time. Now what we're going to do his eyeballs. Now with his eyeballs, we want them to be as smooth as they can be. So this black that I have here, I pretty much keep it watered down. I already mixed some medium in here and it's very thin. However, we're going to take it a step further because we want this paint to go on there just as smooth as possible. So we're going to use a little thing called glaze medium. You're just going to take a drop. Put it in your paint, smoosh it around. And what that's going to do is basically break all the surface, not all the surface tension, but really break up the surface tension in the paint. And that's going to let it lay very, very, very flat. Sometimes you got to shape, shape your brush. It's the best way to do it, I'm sorry. There's nothing, nothing in the world is going to work that well. You can use a wet paper towel and like twist it, but I ain't got time for that. Now this is pretty darn thin, so we are actually seeing some of that color underneath it. So we'll go over it again. So cute. Okay, with the base, this is pretty straightforward. Just try not to get it on the painted part. If what I like to do is just get close with this big brush, because the big brush lets me paint really fast, and then come in later with a smaller one. So we're coming up on the last little bit and we've got two more things to do. First, well, we want to get those letters yellow. That's pretty straightforward. However, we're missing something right here. We want to go ahead and get those eyeballs so that they're very, very, very shiny. And how we do that is with something called a gloss medium. Now, Citadel, who makes the rest of this paint I've been using, makes a gloss medium called Ard coat. Okay, so all this is is clear paint and it's just very, very shiny. There's nothing really to applying it, so we're just gonna go right ahead. Boop. There he is, 30 times cuter already, and that's all it took. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna paint these letters yellow. Now there is kind of a trick to that because we can't just paint yellow on top of black. 
it would take forever. You'll have to do like 35 coats of a bright yellow if you wanted to ever be solid over a black base color. So instead what we're gonna do is start with a thick base. We're gonna use Everland Sunset and that's going to take care of a lot of the black, though it's not bright like we want it to be. So then we'll move on to this flash gets yellow. And finally, we'll hit it with this model color fluorescent yellow. That'll make it look like that text crawl that you see in the, in the beginning of the movies. Throughout all these, I'm going to be using the glaze medium, especially for this base, to make sure that the letters are staying very flat. Now I do want to note that I'm only using a small amount of the glaze medium because we want to keep this pretty thick, otherwise this will take forever. So there we go. So we just get some on there, just like that. Now don't worry too much about getting this on there perfectly. Just make sure you don't accidentally paint the base itself. We're gonna go over this a couple times so it'll even out as we go. Okay, so about something like that. I'm gonna paint the rest of this off camera because, oh my God, is it hard? We'll see you in a bit. Okay, so take a quick peek at what this looks like now, and that's just one coat on there. It's pretty yellow. It's got some splotchiness to it. I could keep going with this same one and even it out. However, <clears throat> I'm a little lazy and I want to hurry the hell up. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the flash gets yellow into the Everland sunset that I already have glazed up. This will both brighten it, but also keep it so it's solid. And just so you can see it, there's the pure Everland and here's with about halfway flash gets in there. I'm going to again do this off camera because I'm not crazy. I lied. I'm not going to do it all off camera. I'm going to go ahead and start doing some of it. All right, that's really giving us what we want. We're both taking care of that blotchiness from the other one and getting it so that it's pretty much the color we want. I think one more of these is gonna do it. Boom. All right, he's looking pretty darn good. We're gonna do one more, one more bump in color. And I know like, holy heck, that's already standing out really good. We're gonna do one more though, we gotta do it. Okay, one last look at this. And it's mostly punched in. One more code is gonna do us though, and then we'll be done. Now, I've already mixed in the fluorescent yellow. It's basically the same color at this point because that color is very faint. However, the fluorescent pigments in it do actually re react to light in a different way. Now, I don't know what that way is, but it's probably cool. So let's go.
not bad. Now, I made a couple mistakes there, and you probably will too. Don't worry, we can just go back with our black and fill in any places where we bled over. I'm gonna go and try to find affiliate links for every one of these paints that I used here today in case you wanna try to reproduce exactly what I've done. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you've never painted before. It is a lot easier to just copy someone. Now I've got more videos coming. Hopefully you'll stick around and watch them. But here's the deal with the uh, affiliate links is that I'm filming this during the March 2020 COVID-19 outbreak. And I know a lot of these places have already shut down and stopped producing. So you might not be able to get a hold of them right away. There should be still some up there if you go now. And I'm sure they'll be back soon otherwise. So I'll see you on the next episode. Do that whole like, comment, subscribe thing. And we'll do some more of this.